Kentucky senior guard Emma King. Please have your attention. It's all a commotion around here. What are you talking about? Let them yap at you. It's actually very exciting. Hey guys, welcome back. It is Brad with College Sportscast. I have John Hammonds here with me tonight. What's up, Hammonds? What's up, my man? So, weather's been a little nasty today, but we're hanging in there. Yeah, it's pretty bad here right now. Yeah, we're hanging in there. <coughs> Welcome in, guys, to College Sportscast. Uh, this is like episode 101 or 102 or something for this season for us here. Mm -hmm. um, so get started. You can now support us with sending stars on Facebook or you can subscribe. Um, any money helps us make new content, so we would appreciate that. I'm going to get that up on the screen for you guys. Um, so you can send stars or you can subscribe and get that out of the right way real quick. And then we have got a special, special guest here with us tonight. And we're going to get started first and foremost with her. All right. So fifth year senior on the Kentucky women's team. Um, she is graduating. I think she graduated in December, to be quite honest with you. Uh, but uh, fifth year senior guard Emma King, I want to welcome you to College Sports Cat. Thank you for having me. Hey, Emma. Hi. Hi, how are you tonight? I'm great. How are you all? We're doing good. We're excited to have you here at College Sports Cast. Um, I loved covering you girls this year. It was such a pleasure. Um, I've been huge in girls basketball. I've actually coached AAU ball and girls um, in Alabama for a while um, at the middle school level, not anywhere near where, what you've been doing. <laughs> but I've always had fun. My sisters played ball, and it's just a pleasure to have you on College Sportscast, and I appreciate you being here. I appreciate you having me and for your support and coverage all season. I really appreciate that. Well, thank you, Emma. So, all right. First and foremost, at the bottom of the screen, this is going to be our very first edition of our College Sports Cast Lady Cats Blast. And we are doing this, of course, with Emma King. So that's going to run at the bottom of the screen while we are talking with Emma. Emma is a fifth-year senior. She come back uh, for that extra COVID year this year. And I kind of want to go kind of reflect on your career here a little bit, Emma. And I want to start with kind of from the very beginning. So you were recruited by Matthew Mitchell. And I just – what do you remember that was special about your recruitment uh, – with Matt, with Matthew, Coach Matthew Mitchell. Yeah, um, so you know, I grew up obviously a Kentucky girl, and um, my dad and I always spent all times. He was my coach in middle school and AAU growing up, and we just spent a lot of time in the gym together. And um, he's always been a Kentucky fan, and he's loved uh, girls basketball for as long as I've I can remember. And so he kind of introduced me to Kentucky basketball, and. Um, we started going to games and I decided, I told my dad in fifth grade, like, hey, dad, like, I think I want to play at Kentucky. And ever since then, like, he has made it his life goal to make sure that, like, I was going to achieve my dreams. And I did. And um, we uh, luckily I got into an EYBO program in high school. And that was pretty much the start of my recruitment. Um, I just. I, you know, like in the EYBL circuit, you just have so many connections. And my dad told uh, Kentucky Premier's head guy, like, hey, sh she's interested in Kentucky. And the very next day, Matthew Mitchell came to my Christmas tournament. Um, 
which was just really, really cool for me. And that's kind of what started my recruitment. Like they were the first um, school really interested in me. And um, I was a Kentucky girl through and through. And I was just so excited um, to be recruited by them. And it just felt like home um, ever since I started talking to Coach Mitchell. I love his personality. I love his love for the Lord. And I loved how much like he invested in women's basketball. And those were like the biggest things for me. All right, cool. So John's got a question here that he wanted to ask you. I'll throw it to him real quick, and then we'll get back um, to a couple of my questions. Um, what, what was your uh, favorite away arena, and what was your favorite player that you played against in the SEC? Oh, interesting. Um, my favorite away arena probably is LSU, just because the environment there is unlike any one um, that I've ever been to in college basketball. Uh, their crowd is incredible, and it's just very, very fun to be there. They make women's basketball more fun, truly. Um, and then my favorite player to play against, um, I don't even know. That's kind of a hard one. I have a lot of respect for a lot of people um, in the SEC, but I don't know if I have a specific, like, favorite player. That's cool. I mean – you know, you played five years, so you played against a lot of players over the years. Um, so it might be hard to pick just one. What, what was it? What was it like going against Don Staley? I know that she's she's had a real rep for her name and stuff, and her being a Hall of Fame coach. It, it, it's kind of nice to be on the floor as the same in that same regard, right? Yeah, Coach Staley is. Um, she's kind of a staple of women's basketball, and it was really cool. Um, we played them on our senior night, but it was very interesting to see like how many people kind of like they came to support us, but also like they were very interested in just like being in the same arena as Don Staley. And I just think that that's the impact that she has on women's basketball. Um, she has climbed her way to the top and um, I have a lot of respect for her. They bring the crowd to when, when like the fans and the crowd, they have to tape off the locker room, you know, at the visitors, even when they're on the road and yeah. stuff. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty wild to see South Carolina um, in person down there and be in the media. So, all right, Emma, I want to kind of get back. So you, you get to Kentucky, and I've got a good a little fun question here for you. Did you have a welcome to Kentucky or a welcome to the SEC moment, like your freshman year? Do you remember one of those? Absolutely. Um, my freshman year, I I was itty bitty. I was so small. I gained 40 <laughs> pounds. Um, be transparent. My freshman year, which was telling because I had never really lifted. And so like I just put on muscle. But like when I got there, I remember I was that was the group with like Sabrina Haynes and Jada Roper and all of them. And so I was a guard and I was going against the guards, but I was playing against fifth year Sabrina Haynes. And I remember um, like I was having to guard her, but <laughs> I mean, I was the same height as her, but she had probably 40 pounds of just pure muscle, muscle. on muscle. me yeah. at the time. <laughs> and I just remember I like, I was so defeated. Like I look at coach Mitchell and I was like, like, I don't know what to do. Like they're like, she is out muscling me. Like, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but <laughs> we made it somehow. Yeah. I mean, you know, in the SEC at Kentucky, I know there had to be some, some tough times, especially early on. Um, and jumping from high school in Kentucky to the SEC had to be a pretty big jump. I would think. Yeah, absolutely. That, I mean, that's really the biggest thing. And I know that, that's like kind of the cliche answer, but like it is truly such a different pace of basketball and the way that you have to be in shape, your strength, like you truly have to be bigger, faster, stronger. And, you know, people tell you that, but there's really no preparing for that until you're kind of thrown into the fire and you have to kind of figure it out. But it absolutely is bigger, faster, stronger basketball for sure. Right. All right. John, you want to ask this one? Oh, um, what was your favorite gym to shoot in? Like, I know, I know you you played in Rupp and you played in Memorial, but 
just your way arena what was your favorite like this is my this is my gym and i'm going to take over i liked auburn's gym for some reason like that was probably the gym that like throughout my career i was the most successful in i think i like it um i just feel like they have a shooters a shooters uh rim but also um their arena is kind of compact and so you know, there's not so much of a depth perce perception issue as, you know, like a lot of people go into Rupp. You know, they're used to playing in smaller coliseums and you go to Rupp and it's like the lights are on you and the people are 15 feet away from you. And that's just a lot different than a lot of other arenas. And Auburn's is real small. And it kind of just felt like I was back in high school. Like we had a pretty big gym. And so I was like, I felt more comfortable. I really liked, honestly, like I really enjoyed playing at Transy too. Yeah, you guys played some home games at Transy this year, right? Yeah, we did since Memorial was being um, yeah. renovated. Mm -hmm. How many how many home games did you have there before y'all kind of finished everything up at Rupp? Three or four? Uh, oh, I, th I thought it was like eight or nine, but I also could just be but, totally wrong. Yeah. Yeah, I know y'all got to play at Transy's gym uh, early this year, like in yeah. November, December. Yeah, that was a lot of our non-conference games because volleyball was going on and – there was just a lot other to, yeah, fight with. Right, right. All right. So, over your career, now you got five years here. What was your favorite, your most fun home win that you can think of? Hmm. Honestly, beating Arkansas um, at home, like as our SEC opener. This year, this year was really, yeah. really fun for us. I think because, um, like, our season didn't necessarily go as we'd hoped, but, like, that was such a great way to start the season for us, um, especially coming off the season that we had last year. And, you know, we were ranked preseason last. And so just coming in and beating Arkansas, who was, I think, top five ranking at the time. Um, and we just – like, it was – Fun basketball, like we enjoyed playing with each other. Like somehow y'all beat them without hitting a three, and I can't. I still can't figure that one out. I know. I don't know. We just we were just playing together. Y'all didn't even get a three that night. I know. You beat them. I know. That was just like one of those <laughs> days that it's like everything is going your way, and it was just it was fun. Like we genuinely just enjoyed uh, playing with each other that day. Right. Yeah, that was a big win. Got the got the uh, seat. The SEC season started off with, uh, you know, a good start anyway. Yeah, um, absolutely. So you, that was the home opener this year. Yeah. All right. So this one, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge you here because I know that you've probably had several different ones. You've been there five years. So who are some of your favorite roommates over your career? The funny favorite thing is, huh? favorite teammates? Okay, I'll, I'll do favorite teammates. I put roommates, but because yeah. I figure you room together too. So Yeah. I, I wouldn't necessarily say I have favorites, but I definitely have people that, you know, you're closer to, especially last year when, um, like, there was 15 of us on the team. So, you know, yeah. you kind of find your people and you – you kind of roll with them. Um, Blair Green was from the day I stepped on campus, like my girl, just because, you know, we were both Kentucky girls. Like we were here, we were doing this together. Um, we just came from a very similar background. And so we were literally two peas in a pod from the day I moved in. Um, right. But with, but with Blair Green at the time came Ryan Howard. And I <laughs> love Ra. Ra is one of my favorite people in the world. Um, she came not too long ago and stayed in Lexington and she was like, Hey, like, can I come stay with you? And I was like, please. And yeah. so she was, yeah, she was with me for three or four days and uh, she's the best. I really love Ra. I really, really love Chastity Patterson. I loved her energy and she was the happiest teammate I think I've ever had. Like it didn't matter what was thrown at her. Like she truly was just like, God has got me, and I'm just happy to be here. And I love that about her. Um, she was a great teammate. Mm -hmm. um, and then Maddie Shear, I'm really close to, um, just, you know, similar with Blair. And we all got to be real big friends last year. And then probably my last one that is just, like, really special to me is Asia Petty. Um, we've gotten really close over this past year. 
and I just love what she has done. Um, she has like, completely transformed herself mentally and physically um, over the past year, and I just have a lot of respect for her. Yeah, I, I, I got to walk out of Rupp one day, day one night after a game uh, with Aja, and, and and just we we just kind of chatted on the way out is out you know after the game of course and and we just was walking out she was going to the same parking lot I was so um, she's she uh, she's quiet when she don't know you I mean like for you she's probably not because you're a teammate. no she is she's quiet she's still quiet yeah uh-huh. yeah yeah but she's put in a lot of work and and really had a great season. Um, so, and has that extra year. So that's all I'm going to say about that. You know? <laughs> yeah. I love, I love Petty. I really do. She's, I got, I got another question for you real quick. Sure. Um, what was it like winning the SEC tournament back? Was it 22? Um, what was it just like beating South Carolina? I, I know that that was a big accomplishment for you. All. Yeah. That, I mean, that is, you know, highlight of your, anybody's career. Um, this it is going to go along with this question, probably. So I'm going to go okay. ahead and put this question up. There you go. Because that's probably going to go along with this question. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of, like, on the floor, absolutely. Like, the SEC tournament was the biggest accomplishment, but it was the most fun. Um, especially, you know, like, we we had struggled that season in parts. Like, I think we went on – Early? Like, early? Yeah. You guys I think had, we yeah. went on a, yeah. a nine-game losing streak and like – we got to the point where it was fish or cut bait. And like, I remember Ralph set us down and she was like, I'm not going out like this. Like we are going to turn this around. And then we, cause we had to win out at that point um, to even have a chance at the SEC tournament because we needed the buy, the buy wins, the buy games. And so, um, but once we got to the SEC tournament, um, when we beat LSU, like there was nobody in the world telling us that we weren't winning it. Like we were not scared to play South Carolina. Like we were so prepared. Like it was just a mental lock-in like I've never seen before. Um, Like I've never been a part of since then and before then. Like we knew we were going to – like when Dre Edwards shot that shot, like I was up. Like I I I, knew it was in because I knew we weren't losing. It was (laughs) surreal. It was so surreal. And it was so fun. Did you you by chance watch Baylor – this this like the past weekend in the NCAA tournament. I didn't watch the game, but I, I heard a little bit about it. Jada played really well, by the Jada's way. Jada's a great she, basketball player. Jada played really well, not just that game, but the game before too. She yeah, had she's had a really good. She's had a really good season. I've been really proud of her. Um, she's just kind of been able to take control, and she's a prolific scorer. Um, like that's what she is known for. But she can get after people on defense too. She is as tough as they come. Well, her and Edwards were basically kind of leading that Baylor team. Uh, so, ex-teammates of of Emma's, yeah. by the way, yeah. from I from the twenty-two from the twenty-two team that we were just talking about. If you guys yeah. don't know, so I got I got another quick quick little question here. It's about the Final Four next week. So you know, Paige Buckets and Caitlin Clark are playing Friday night, right? Right. So who you got? Who you rolling with in this Final Four? I know everybody's rolling with South Carolina, but. I know that you probably have your favorites that you like personally, like, you know, basketball players. So, yeah, um, I do think South Carolina will win. Um, I just they have think so much talent, Emma. It's crazy. Have, and, but the thing like South Carolina's weapon is that they could platoon at any time and they could be better. That's what I'm saying. Is, they, they, a, they, like, it's they can just run them in. They can run them in from the locker room. I mean, they yeah. just, you know, it's crazy. Yeah. They, yeah. So I, I genuinely don't think anybody's going to beat South Carolina just because they're a hard matchup. Um, but with that being said, like, I really, really, I watched the Iowa and um, LSU game last night. I love Iowa. I love the way that they play. Um, they just play so fast paced and so hard. And Emma, I got to give you a number. I got to give you a number from last night's game. Twelve point three million people watched that game last night. Most ever on ESPN. That's crazy. Yes. I know. Yes. And, and people don't realize the women's game is growing and evolving. Um, it, it's changing as we speak. And, and you know, I, I've been watching it the last couple of years, and there's so much talent beyond the men's game 
especially in the women's game now. Yeah. Um, you have Juju Watkins. Um, she's going to be really good for USC and whatnot. But it, it, the women's game is getting getting there. Madison and, and Booker, more Hannah Hidalgo. Yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of great players in the women's game. And those, these are. are freshmen that I'm talking about. Yeah. Malaysia for Wiley. If you guys don't know her, she's amazing in South Carolina. She is incredibly crafty. Gifted, yes. yes. Crafty, gifted on the shifty, whatever you want to call it. Yes, that absolutely. Is, she is the kind of people that you pray you don't have to guard. <laughs> yes. And it's Emma's just so, been on the it's floor so hard to stay in she front knows. of people like that. What? I'm yeah. sorry. I said, and Emma's been on the floor with us. She knows. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she yeah. is very impressive. Yeah. If you guys don't know her name, I'm telling you, she has been turning on. She is straight. a highlight reel. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know that, you know, Tahina Pow Pow and Tardosa and, you know, get kind of more pub from them, but they're they're loaded with talent. Yeah. And you just – the thing about them is you never know who's going to go off, and it really doesn't matter. It Literally no. any one of their well, – kids. I mean, you just – you can keep naming them. Yeah. I'm kind of, you know, and I'm kind of, and I'm kind of stuck in a bad spot this week because I really like Paige Buckets too and Caitlin Clark, so I'm kind of in a tough spot here. I'm like, I want Paige, Buc- I want Paige Buckets to do good and Caitlin Clark to do good, but I think that's going to be a really fascinating game between them two. Yeah, absolutely. No offense to Paige and no offense to Gino, y'all have won enough. Yeah, right. <laughs> Give somebody else a turn. See, that's kind of why yeah. I don't want South Carolina to win either. Like, I know I should be rooting for the SEC, but Listen, I like, usually am SEC. I'm usually an SEC guy, and I would normally, but I've been pulling for Caitlin and Iowa on the women's side. Yeah. For about three years now. Yeah. And I was pulling for them last year, and of course, you know, LSU got them in the finals last year, and I'm still pulling for Caitlin and Iowa. So yeah. I just love watching them play. They are a very, very fun and fundamental team, which just makes it all the better. Well, and I mentioned this last night, you know, on a on a tweet or something. Caitlin Clark's presence and her her vision, court vision, is is absolutely insane. By her court sense, I've never seen a girl have that much court sense in my life. It's, I will it's say amazing. that Reed Shepard can drop amazing. those. Those passes, like like she can, like from eighty feet away, <laughs> yeah. and just yeah. like it's just amazing. Yeah, it is. It's a gift. Really she can it do really on the floor. I mean, and that's not including her thirty-five foot shots. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. From downtown right, Danville, so I'm gonna ask you, <laughs> I'm gonna ask you a question here, and I think you guys kept this as stats, so. Because of that, I'm going to ask you this. You always kind of took pride in taking charges for the the women's Kentucky team. So I know you and uh, Cassidy Rowe were neck and neck for the most this year. I think Cassidy might have got you towards the end, I think. But you got a five-year career. Do you know how many charges you took in five years at Kentucky? I genuinely have no idea. (laughs) You don't know? Oh, man, I thought you might know. No. <laughs> no. Because I I know, well, I know that Kyra kept it as a stat. So yeah. 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 I think Cass and I were both close or around to 20. Um, yeah. yeah or I, think I, think, I think Cass, I, I do think Cass took more than me. Um, but mine was more of just uh, like, I, you know, at the end of the day, like I don't really have much of, else of a choice. Like I was playing out of position. And it was like, how like how can I be a part of this team and help them be better? And I'm not blocking Chloe Kitt's shot. Right. Like I, I know, you know, I get it. So you're you're it four, was, you're four inches, five inches shorter than she is. I get right. It. Yeah. And like those were my matchups all year. So like it was kind yeah. of like uh, you know, I have to. And whatever it takes to win, like I'm willing to do it. Right. All right, Emma, I've got two quick kind of – well, it don't have to be quick, but two more questions here, and then we'll let you go. 
I know you've been with us a while. I promised about 20 minutes. We've run a little over. I'm sorry. I'll go ahead and say that. <laughs> Don't worry. But I have to ask this. There's a lot of buzz going around now about the Kentucky women's basketball program, and I'm not going to get into all of it. If you're a Kentucky uh, fan, you should know what I'm talking about here. Are you excited for the future of the program? I absolutely am. I think that is – like, I really am. Like, I'm genuinely very excited. Uh, I love this program. I love the people. And I, that has by far been the best part of my experience is just the people that are here. Like, I love the University of Kentucky. And so I'm really excited for the program. Um, my teammates, like, I'm so excited to see what they're going to be able to do. Um, and I just – I think that this could be um, really good. And I, I'm just really hopeful. Um because I really do. I love the program, and I want to see it succeed, and I know that um, we can get back to where we're supposed to be at. I mean, Matthew Mitchell done a fantastic job getting Kentucky um, there. Cairo won the SEC tournament with you guys. It can be done at, yeah. you know, here at Kentucky. Absolutely. And Kentucky is yeah. a, a place that – um, like I feel like it should be pretty easy to recruit to. So I'm very hopeful in seeing that in the future. And um, like we just have a lot of things to offer here. And so I'm I really mean, excited. Honestly, honestly, Emmett, there's like he's got some stuff going on. He might pull some players here. Yeah. Yeah. I think that it's very possible. I just hope everybody else um, that comes gets to kind of experience what I did. And I'm really excited to see the trajectory of the program. I figured you would be, and I, I couldn't. It, I would be remiss if I had you on and I at least didn't hit a question on the buzz. I know um, that you know you're you're moving on from the program and stuff, but I know that you still love this program, and I had to ask you at least that one question on it. So I'll get you out of here with this, Emma. Uh, you will always be known as a 2022 SEC champion, Kentucky player. So. You you always are going to have that title. Uh, now that you are moving on, that's how you will probably be addressed for most of your life from here on out. But tell us, Emma, what's the next chapter for, for Emma King? Yeah, so um, like you said at the beginning, I graduated in December with my bachelor's in human health sciences, um, and I'm currently getting my master's in finance. Um, I'll finish that in December. And um, I recently got engaged. So um, I'm currently kind of wedding planning. And I saw that. And congratulations, by the Thank way. You. Thank you. Um, so I'm very excited yeah. about that. I'm kind of getting into the wedding planning, um, kind of trying to find a job. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of moving parts going on in my life right now. But um, I'm really excited just about what the future holds and, you know, where I'll end up. Is basketball ever going to be back in your future again you think or are you gonna go in different directions I think I'm gonna go in a different direction you know that's kind of all I've known my whole life and I'm really excited to kind of just explore um you know like my other interests like I've just put so much time and effort um into this part of my life and um no more weightlifting I for Emma Oh, no, I still lift. I go lift with Coach Taylor every day. Um, I genuinely enjoy that. So, like, that's the kind of stuff that, like, I'm excited about. I'm excited because I tell Coach Taylor all the time. I'm like, I don't have to be as strong as I need to be. Like, I don't have to be as muscular as you can make me. So, like, I'm excited <laughs> just to work out and, like, enjoy it and find different workouts and, you know, just the little stuff um, I'm really looking forward to. Well, Emma – I, I wish you all the success um, and congratulations on your new engagement. I think it's within the last couple of weeks after, you know, after the season ended for you guys. So I did see your post on it. Um, I think it was Twitter that I've seen a picture of. I think I'm not sure, um, but I did see that. So before I let you go, I just want to say congratulations and I hope nothing but the best for you. And as always, go Big Blue. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. And as always, go Cats. Yep. Thank you, Emma. Have a good night. Thank you. You too. I appreciate it. I hope you had fun. Oh, I did. Thank you. I really do appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Emma. No problem.
All right, guys, that was Emma King. She is a fifth year senior on the 2024 women's Kentucky basketball team this year. And she came back for her extra COVID year. Um, so she got five years in. She is from Stanford, Kentucky. She is born and raised, always bled blue. Like she said here, um, she knew she wanted to play for Kentucky from the fifth grade on. You're muted. You're muted. Oh, my bad. 606, yeah. by gosh. <laughs> yep. 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 She, she's from Stanford, Kentucky. Um, and, um, you know, like I said, she grew up here. That's the reason why I wanted to have her on. Cami Moore, um, I want to say that I appreciate you uh, letting us have her in and on and helping me set this up. Uh, yeah, University you. of Kentucky Women's. Um, so with that, we will move on. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed Emma King on our show. I agree. Yep, yeah, she's um, a great guest. She, she, she was a great she's guest. Just, she's, just, she's not just a great ball player. She's she's a genuine person and a kind and loving person. And and uh, it's hard to find that nowadays in this world. And and Emma King just exactly that. So yeah, she's a great great human being. I've got to ask her a few questions, uh, post game questions, um, and talk to her. I got to go in the locker room a few times after games. Um, this year. So I got to know her just a little bit this year covering the women's games. Um, and just I, I have asked her about her being a fifth year senior and what it meant to her to play for Kentucky. And I knew that it meant an awful lot to her. So I appreciate I appreciate her being with us tonight. Um, and sharing a little bit about her career and about the fun and the ups and downs and, and everything and uh, appreciate her being with us. So, all right, from here, guys, we are going to move on to um, actually Final Four topics and Final Four teams. So we're going to move on and do a little bit of our Big Fuss show here with you guys tonight. And I'm trying to get the rest of my stuff up there on the screen for you guys. And the first thing I want to talk about, John, let's talk about this dominant run that UConn has been on. I don't know, like, I'm talking about 2023 and 2024. Mm -hmm. So, Nobody has stayed within 13 points of them in the NCAA tournament. Not one team. You know, you know, one thing that really impressed me about this UConn team was the 30 to zero run they had against Illinois the other night. In an elite eight game. In elite, it's in never elite, happened. Elite eight game. I mean, that's we're talking up to, from last year. They've been whipping teams by 20 point 20 plus. Um, they're just on another level, you know. They got um Tristan Newton, um, they got Alex Caraban, they got Donovan Klingon. Man, this team I mean, honestly, is Dan Hurley the best coach in the game right now? I think he is. Now, you might not like his antics and the things that he pulls sometimes, but that's any coach. Yeah, um, you know he's had a couple run-ins with the fans this past year. Um, had some comments for him, but that that happens for everybody, especially when you're a coach. But he's got the I don't give a crap attitude, and that's what I like about him. And he's got UConn two more wins away from what three championships? From a three, repeat in three three championships? What in twelve years? Is that right? I, th I don't yeah. remember. That's right. I think it's twelve years. Um, ten will be ten. Uh, not, ten years. Ten, they won years. one in twenty in twenty fourteen. Yeah, so it'd be ten years. But yeah, they're just on another level right now. I, I don't see Alabama actually, being able. Actually, they won in twenty eleven too. So that would be yeah. four championships in thirteen years. Mm -hmm. That's pretty dominant. I just don't see Alabama. Hanging with them, I don't. Um, 
Now, if there's any team that probably can hang with them, it's Purdue. Um, and, you know, especially, you know, with Edie, um, they have some guards that can kind of neutralize some of their guards um, and maybe play one-on-one. But at the end of the day, I just don't think UConn um, relinquishes this title. I think they win the whole thing. But um, we'll find out. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, you know, to finish it, you know, can anyone hang with them? Of course, they're matching up with Alabama. Um, and it depends on how Alabama plays. Mm-hmm. If they play to at their best and Mark Sears goes for 30 and and Nelson's for 20 and Estrada plays good and they play at their best, do they have a sh- an outside shot in this game? Maybe if Maybe. they play their best. But – I want to tell you, really? that performance that Grant Nelson had against North Carolina that night was yeah. about one of the best performances I've seen. I mean, him it is. So if he can do that and Sears can go for 28 or 30, then, I mean, you know, they, they would have a shot. So, you know, the other night I thought Pringle played really well. He drew 12 fouls yeah. in that game the other night. So I thought he was helpful for them. But – Can we – can we get to, to what I really want to talk about? What's that? My man, DJ Burns from NC State. I want yeah, to just got, go. Hang on. Let me. I mean, I, I'll get, you know, I'll I'll get his. Favorite. So right here, we got DJ Burns and NC State, the magic storyline that's going on. Um, he is a sixth-year player, and that's where I'll start. I know there's a lot of buzz and stuff, but. When you've been in the game for six years in college and you're playing these, I mean, you've got a little bit of an advantage. I mean, I'm you're still, you have man. four years. And you, and you're the out. way he moves his feet in the paint and the way he, he handles the ball it is uh, extraordinary for his size. I mean, you know. It's a magic run. And I, for me, I just wish that Jimmy V was here to see it. Yeah, it would it'd be icing on the cake. You know, with yeah. with what they went through, you know, here here's the thing that really impresses me about this whole streak. Well, it really wouldn't impress me. It it's just the facts of how it happened. So you got a team like Virginia; they're playing in the semifinals of the ACC tournament. If he hits those free throws, they don't even go to the tournament. Yeah. Oh, the game, the, the Virginia ices that game, and NC State most yeah. likely don't go to the NCAA tournament. Instead, they get a buzzer beater bank shot that goes in, and the rest is history. And they've took out – here's the teams they took out. Now, listen to this. They've took out Virginia. Duke which twice. Duke twice. North yeah. Carolina beat a really good Oakland team, beat a decent – Texas Tech team, um, and the Sweet 16 game, I can't remember, uh, was it um, Marquette, beat a decent, Marquette. Beat, a de- beat a decent Marquette, Marquette team. Marquette was a good team. They was. Great shooting team. Yeah. Yeah. And some of the teams that they beat along this way is, is impressive as well. And you know what I'm excited about? I know people saying, well, oh, you can't, uh, but – DJ Burns and Zach Eady in the post. Like, this is going to be cinema, y'all. Like, yeah, it is. cinema. Like, it's going to be and, fun. And that's where, that's where we'll go to next, man. I mean, Zach Eady and Purdue makes their final four. I mean, this is the third year running with Eady. First time since 1980. Um, since yeah, the, first time in the final four for Purdue. But, but Eady has been dominant for the last. Mm-hmm. Last three years, and he's been he's knocked talking, out. And he's talking, he finally gets and he's talking the job his done crap. And, and he's talking his crap yeah. too. But he deserves to talk crap with all the crap oh, he that does. he's had to put up with, um, because they got knocked out. So I mean, all this talk that you know he deserves to talk crap after yeah, finally getting there. Yep, I, I agree. I, I mean, I definitely have to say that um, Purdue knocking out. Tennessee, who had a really good team, good, yeah, good season. season. 
Um, Dalton Connect was amazing again. Watching, watching the Eden problem and connect the problem with Tennessee 40 and thirty-seven and carry their teams was amazing. Over well, the, the problem with Tennessee is I told people all year the issue that was going on with Tennessee was the fact that they did not have nobody step up beyond Dalton Connect. Now there was a few games where it happened with yeah, um, beside Jordan James and, and Zakai Ziegler. But beyond that, they never really had a guy that could just step up beyond Dalton Connect, and, and it. They I, and I figured that it would bite them in the end, eventually down the stretch. In the time. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of did too. Um, and and but Zach Eady carried Purdue too. I mean, he had forty. He you know, so I mean, their their teams only had the rest of the team only had like twenty eight points or twenty seven points or something. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I mean, you know, Zach Eady is carrying them. You got Purdue versus NC State, the the Burns. You got Eady and Burns going to go at it on Saturday in the semifinals, and you got UConn and and Bama. So we're going to get to Bama. Alabama makes their first ever Final Four. Um, we'll start with that. You can see I got another question there, but you can kind of talk about the run that Alabama has been on and gets to the final four. Well, a lot of people wanted to fade Alabama before this tournament started because of their defense. Like yeah. I said, they'll never make it out of the second they week. They stepped up and been playing a little better defense yeah. in, the tournament, and in the tournament. I noticed a big change when when they played defense against Grand Canyon because Grand Canyon's a really good offensive team. And they put some clamps on Grand Canyon – um, you know, the Charleston game was a high scoring game, but what really showed me was the game against North Carolina. Um, the way they battled every single time North Carolina made a run, Mark Sears and Grant Nelson would make a play. Um, they did the same thing against Clemson. Um, this Alabama team's really, really good, you know, with Mark Sears, Grant Nelson, um, Rylan Griffith, um, Estrada, Estrada. It's a bunch of transfers. Is what is what, yeah. is what you're basically boiling it down to. Man, and what NATO? Speaking of that, I want to bring up a topic here. You're talking about a bunch of transfers. NATO from last year's number one overall team that didn't make it to the final four. Okay, mm -hmm. he replaced. He has nine new players, three new assistant coaches, and four new staff members on his team. He replaced almost everybody. He was left with nothing and comes back off of Alabama's maybe best overall regular season team ever and puts together a final four run with would Sears you say would you Nelson. say would you say that this Alabama team shooting wise is better than last year? Maybe, yeah, with because Sears. He, and stuff well, I, yeah. I understand. You know, you had you had Brandon Miller, but yeah, he was he was the show. Brandon Miller was. He was. He was the he was the show. Like nobody, you noticed everybody, but you mostly noticed him the whole night. Like yeah, now you start seeing other guys. You know what I'm saying? Like Sears, Grant Nelson. Yeah, um, and I'll tell you, somebody else has played really good. Nick Pringle has played about as good as anybody. Pringle. Pringle's been playing year. really good. Played really well the last couple of games. So, yeah, great for Alabama. And for your last question there, I think he's the most underrated coach in the country. Um, I think I, I I know I shouldn't say this, but Cal Perry ever walks off, ever resigns, I'd pull the Brink truck up and pay Nate Oates what he wants. And there's a lot of people because of what happened with Brandon Miller last year that would fight against you on that. But if you take what that man has done, he was a high school coach 10, 11 years ago, okay? He was. And the ironic thing is, is that the guy who gave him his college break was, was none other Hurley. than Bobby Hurley. Bobby Hurley. Bobby yep. Hurley, okay? Yep. And ironically, who's he facing in the Final Four this coming week? His brother Danny. Yep. Exactly. Storylines, everybody. Storylines. That's what this is about. Yep. That's what the tournament's always yep. been about. There's your storyline. 
Well, there's your storyline for, yeah. for UConn versus Alabama. You want to know what's crazy to me? I, I was got here, his break from Bobby Hurley. You know, what I'm sitting here thinking, you know, I know it, it most likely won't happen, and we're, we're probably thinking ahead too quick, but could you imagine if NC State was to win this whole thing after all that they've went through, like uh, everything that's happened? I mean, one last nugget on NC State. Just so you guys know, no team has ever made it to the Final Four that had 14 losses, ever, until NC State until this NC year. State. Yeah. No team when had ever made it this, to the Final this would be a good, This would be a quick question. When was the last time a double-digit seed won it? Was it NC State? See, 83 was before 85, so there wasn't even – I'm not even sure that it there might, was. It might, have been, it might have been Villanova with, with – Yeah, in um, 85. Where they, where, they, where they beat Georgetown. If yeah, I, it if might I have been at Villanova in 85. I'm not even sure that there was, like, double-digit seeds like that in 83. No, back then it was – the tournament setup was a lot different. It was like 32 teams or something. Yeah, something like that, yeah. Back then. Now, in 85, started the 64 teams. Yeah. And that was the year that Villanova beat Georgetown, who was a defending champ, by the way. So if you get NC State, if you get NC State and UConn, you would be NC State going against the defending champ, just like, just like didn't Brent Musburger. Did. Didn't Brent Musburger get the March Madness name? Didn't he call it March Madness? I think so. Yeah, I think he was think part so. of the reason they called it March Madness. Yeah. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. 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 That's a that's a cool little story behind that too. About about how yeah. it became March Madness. Yeah. Right. So in 80, 83, when when NC State won it, I'm pretty sure there was only thirty two teams, so there wasn't double digit seats. And people right. don't realize the NIT used to be the big tournament back in the day. It used to be Even one of the sixties and seventies. The NIT was still pretty big. It was still pretty huge. Yeah. And actually, speaking of the NIT, um, there was some games on tonight. Do you want me to update the scoreboard? Yeah, you can. Yeah. Uh, let me find it here. No, yeah, I had the, it on. The here. final four of the NIT is going on tonight in Indianapolis, um, I think. Indiana tonight. State is in the finals. They beat Utah tonight 100 to 90. Um, not real sure, other than that, don't really have the box score. And early on, Seton Hall's up 10 to 2 on Georgia. So, um, Indiana State will be playing for an NIT championship after being left out of the NCAA tournament. Would that not be poetic? <laughs> yeah. Hey, good for them, man. I, I wanted them. Yeah, in the good for them, Indiana Robbie. State. Good the for Sycamore. Robbie. Really, man. Good for the Sycamores. Shout out to Terre Haute, Indiana. My, the trees, my brother, baby. The trees. My brother, my brother went to school at a – a different school, but he did go close to Terre Haute there. Um, and um, it was a construction, so it's different. It was different, but um, it's not too far from where he lives. So I got got to give a shout, shout out to Terre Haute, Indiana, um, <laughs> where the sycamores, the sycamores, <laughs> the trees, the trees yep, are from. All right, guys, we got to dig into some of this women's tournament. I mean, if you didn't watch Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese yesterday, I don't even know. Was your head in the sand somewhere? That's all yeah, I want to know. Must have been. Because, guys, like, it was the most watched game on ESPN basically all damn year. Even more. it There was more people that watched this game than every single Regular season college football game, except for Ohio State and Michigan. And I'll tell you something, too. You know, it wouldn't – and there wasn't a lot of trash talking either this time. It was – No, there it wasn't. Was, and it was, it was more good business. to see. It was more business than it was. It was more business this time, and it was good to mm -hmm. see. I, I really enjoyed watching this game. I, I was so hyped for this game, guys. You have no idea. Man. Um, she she nailed, I think was it nine threes? I think it was nine, yeah. yeah. Like she was pulling up like from 
from Memphis. I remember. I remember right. one time. Yes, I remember one time. Uh, the announcer. She was coming up. She had just passed the free throw line on the other side of the floor. Okay, and she was coming up the court, and the announcer was like, "She's gonna pull. She's gonna pull. She's gonna pull." <laughs> And sure enough, she pulled, she pulled. and she knocked and she knocked. Here's the thing straight about down. people don't realize. I was like, then they, not, so she's, like, she's gonna pull, she's gonna pull. <laughs> it ain't so much her shooting and her and her scoring, it's her vision on the court. Like it, it's it's beyond anything I've ever seen. 41 points, seven rebounds, 12 assists. Sweet 16, she had 15 assists. I mean, this girl. Listen, I want her to be able to get this title so she can get everybody off of her back because she is the greatest women's college player of all time. And I don't care what anybody says. I know Nancy Lieberman, and I remember Cheryl Miller. I was a kid. I remember Cheryl Miller, okay? I remember Cheryl Swoops. I remember Holdsclaw. I remember, you know... You know, you, I'm just kind of curious from the other side of it. What happened to Haley Van? I remember them all. Okay. I just wonder what happened to Haley Van Lith. Like, what happened to her? She's not even the same player anymore. Well, she plays completely different for LSU than she than she did at. She plays point guard and basically runs the team, and she doesn't shoot a like. When she played at Louisville, she played. She was basically the shooting guard. And yeah, I felt like she plays better in that situation than she did where she was at LSU because I feel like she's lost her confidence in some ways. She she played completely different for LSU than she did at Louisville this year. So, and, and there's a good chance that she could use her COVID year and come back. There, there's, she can. She can. And, and Angel Reese can too. And I'm not Angel sure. Angel Reese has got a COVID year too. And I'm not sure they'll do that, but um Yeah. There's a good yeah. there's a good chance that they could though. Yeah, they absolutely can. And with Flage Johnson and Moro and and I mean, good grief. They are so talented. Like seriously, yeah. that LSU team is so they just, talented. They just I ran into the, they just I ran mean, into Kate. They just ran into Caitlin Carts, what they run into. That's yeah, well, oh, you said well, well, Caitlin Clark dished those 12 assists, and she had two teammates that one of them had averaged four points a game and got 16, and the other one had averaged 11 and got 21 because mm -hmm. she was dish dishing the ball so well last night. The one pass that she made from – was it midcourt? That was absolutely insane to me. Like, that was yeah, just – I mean, Caitlin, it was – like, she shot great. She scored 41 points. But I'm telling you, her passing and getting her teammates involved is when she wins games. Going up that's, against that's UConn, where, that's, here, that's, that's, exactly, that's exactly what she's going to have to do. She is going to have to not only score 35 points, she's going to have to dish 12, 15 assists. Well, that's, where, that's where she's dangerous, too, is where she gets her teammates involved. She makes yeah. them all better, you know? So. Yeah, she does, absolutely. All right, so before last night, Night before last, you had South Carolina um, taking out Oregon State in the Elite Eight by 12. Um, you know, this South Carolina team is, you heard, if you were on with this earlier, you heard Emma talking about this South Carolina team and just how talented they are and how many different players and the waves of talent that they have. Uh, but let's mm -hmm. talk about Don Staley for a minute. They are undefeated again. I'm going to give you a stat, guys, okay? Y'all know me on the show here. I like to give little nuggets and stats, okay? The last time that South Carolina women's team lost a regular season game was December of 2021. Mm -hmm. Did y'all hear me? The last time they lost a regular season game was December of 2021. And by the chance, by the way, this is not regular season. So if they lose here, that stat's going to go on. Yeah. And 
the last team, the last SEC team to beat them was Emma King in Kentucky. In Kentucky in 2022, in March of 2022, to win the SEC tournament. Yep. Just so you guys know, there's another little nugget. Yep. So this South Carolina team, Cardosa, Chloe Kitts, uh, Malaysia for Wiley. I'm telling you, you got to remember this name, man. She's and I tell you, I tell you, and the closest that they come was Indiana was the closest they got yeah. to them this this, this tournament. They, well, Indiana closed like they were ahead 22 points in that game, and they just kind of faded back, and then they let them in the game, and yeah, and only won by four. But they were ahead by 22. Mackenzie Holmes was. Mackenzie Holmes had a big game too again. Um, she did. She did a big really second half, player. a real big second half for sure. Yeah, she's a really good player for Indiana. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And they and they, you know, made it the closest that they've had so far. Um, of course, they're going to get NC State here. Um, there are two teams. There are two teams. Two schools that have both men's and women's in the Final Four. First time that's ever happened. UConn and NC State. My question to you with NC State here in the women's game is, is this NC State team as a three seed, are they considered a Cinderella too? Mm. Kind of like the men's, even though they're 11 seed. I mean, this is a three seed, but they had to, they had to take out Cameron Brink and Hannah Jump and I say Stanford. they would be I say they would be if and they had to take out UConn. Madison Booker and, Booker and the number one seed uh Texas to get here. I say they would they would be if they beat UConn. Um because being a three seed is completely different than being what eleven. It's you're a higher seed. I wouldn't consider it. But the women's game's a little different. It's, but, just, like, it's kind of tough. if you're in that – but if you're in that Cinderella story with a bunch of number one seeds, like with Iowa, um, you know, South Carolina, and then you got UConn, which is not a one seed there. I think they're a two or a three. Um, I think you would have to consider them the, the odd team to be the Cinderella. You know what I mean? And I'm going to tell you something. If you've never watched um, – Sanaya Rivers play. She can I fight get at, she can fight get after it for NC State. Yep. She's a fun player to watch. So um not sure yeah, how they she, how they she's handle their, the, she's their best player, Sanaya Rivers. Um and you know they've had a, a heck of a run here. I mean, taking out Cameron Brink in Stanford is not easy. Taking mm-hmm. out the number one seed, seed Madison Booker, Texas, is not easy. Um, mm-hmm. They were down 10 at halftime to Texas. Yeah. No, so, no, no, no. I take it back. They were down 10 at halftime to Stanford and Cameron Stanford, Brink. Yeah. And come back and won by 10. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know how they'll do against UConn, but um, not UConn, um, South Carolina. They play but, South Carolina. Yeah. Which you know, is going to be a tough that's game. Why, that's, why they, that's why they play the games because it's on a neutral yeah. court. Um, it's not on a home court, so you know it's it's anybody's game, anybody's fair game in, in these kind of tournaments. So, yeah, absolutely. I mean, they made the run to the Final Four. Nobody can ever take that away from them. That is a that is a milestone mark that you will always have. Um, ACC, and they get to do it and enjoy it with their men's program on this amazing run as well. So they're both still playing, um, which is pretty amazing, to be honest with you. And, of course, we can't not talk about Gino Page. And I got to ask you about the shorthanded run that UConn is on, getting them back into the Final Four. And it's uh... – I'm telling you shorthanded. I put that in there specifically because UConn is down five injured players. Yeah. They literally have seven girls on the bench and start five. 
They are playing with seven girls. That's all they have available. You know, his he's got four freshman contributors, and he's got his he's got his main gal, Paige Buck. Well, I call her Paige Buckets, Paige Buchers. Buckets. Um, she's averaging thirty nine. She's averaging almost thirty nine minutes in this tournament. Yeah, um, she's basically because playing. He literally team. has two players on the bench. Yeah, and you know he said something. The I think That's it was the other day. He said, um, you know, it's a it was a miracle. Honest to God, man, I can't believe this is actually happening. Yeah. Um, if you asked me three weeks ago what I was doing on April 6th, I would have told you I was going to Florida to play a couple of days of golf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But he said, but we're going to Cleveland instead. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that was a comment that was pulled out of the um, – I think it well, was I mean, from – Everybody kind of ripped them off because they've had so many injuries. Yeah, and they're right back where they, they're right back where they always belonged in the final four. And somehow or another, he puts it together with seven girls having to play four freshmen, and like here they are. You've got Paige and Aaliyah Edwards, and basically a bunch of freshmen. Yep. Sometimes you have to work with what you got, and that's what's happening. That's sort of the whole the whole deal with NC State men's. The, the guys that they play or who they play, I think they I think they just play seven guys, and I think they play seven. It's it's not many guys, and I yeah. think you know. And well, unless that's, they get, that's who's playing here for for the women here for UConn. I know for sure. Unless they get in foul yeah. trouble, which he has. You know, se- Dickie Burns had a. Listen, I'm saying foul trouble. I'm saying foul, fouling out. I'm saying he only has seven players available that's healthy. I mean, that's. Gishel, Gishel had to get down to the water boy if something happened in the final four. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, so he, you get one person in foul trouble and, you know, you got one sub for 10 yeah. minutes. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's a. It's a tough hand to be dealt, but for Gino Page and Aaliyah Edwards to get them back to the Final Four because they got knocked out in the Sweet 16 last year. Especially this, this late, especially this late in the year because you're trying to play for a national championship when you got all those players injured. Yes. But congrats to them, Paige Buckets. Um, they play Caitlin Clark and company Friday night. Which should they be do. absolutely, I cannot should wait be absolutely for this game, game just like the LSU game. I cannot wait for this game Friday night. Y'all have no Twitter, idea. Now listen, Twitter might Twitter might break an app the Friday night. Like with I have been games. covering women's basketball all season long, and I've been a I've been a Caitlin Clark fan for a while. I've been a Cameron Brink fan. I've actually been a Paige uh, Becker's fan as well. There is some. So many really good players. I mean, Juju Watkins got knocked out freshman. Madison Booker got knocked out freshman. Cameron Juju Watkins senior. Um, I, I watched the. I think it was the ending of the game, and she was emotional going going she to the. She was, game. but she was that she has got a. She's still eighteen years old, guys. That kid's got a bright future ahead of her. Yeah, really yeah. bright. She's six foot two and plays ball like she's like she's 25 and she's 18. 18, yeah. Yeah. And by the way, if anybody cares, um, the McDonald's yeah, all, it, all, McDonald's I'm gonna, American I'm gonna, game. I'm gonna, it was tonight. I gotta throw this in here yeah. before we um, talk about anything else. So I gotta throw this in. Mulkey, Reese, and LSU, I think they get a bad rep. And I got to throw this in. You heard Emma talk about how fun it was to play against LSU um, and the environment that they bring and the and the joy and the love for women's basketball that they bring everywhere they go. Caitlin Clark's been doing that in Iowa this year as well. But LSU has been doing this for a while. Um, Emma's played five years. so. You know, she used to go and, and, you know, before even Mulkey got there, you know, 
uh, and she was talking about, you know, what a great environment LSU was. Do you do you think they get a bad rap? It, I guess it's all how you look at it. I guess. I think they do. I mean, I think they do, but sometimes Mike, I like him more. Guys, I like him more. This story from from the L.A. Confidential or whatever it was that 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 produced that story that you know that they had to adjust and and take down and everything else because they're saying stuff that's out of line. To be quite honest with you, the Washington Post. Is, is creating stories, trying to uh, cause a conflict, a, a distraction for them in the tournament. I mean, nobody else gets done and treated like this except for LSU and Mulkey and Reese. No, every, every team goes through little, little spits and spats. Yeah, but not quite like this during the tournament. I mean, I, I just – Well, Kim Mulkey, I love Kim Mulkey, but sometimes she – she's, she's a great very, coach. She's, she's rough very, around the edges. He's very she's opinionated. He's very opinionated. She's also rough around the edges. You she know is. what I she's she's the Bobby Knight of women's basketball. She is. It's just it. <laughs> you either like it or you don't. That's just she's the Bobby Knight of, of women's basketball. Great coach. Don't give a shit what she says. <laughs> no, that's a fact. <laughs> but man. But, she I had could a good time. I had a good time. And Aunt Reese, she listen. I have seen her up close and personal. I've you know been to press conferences with her. I've seen her play four or five times, setting courtside, um, where the players sit and stuff. Not far from that. I mean, she is an amazing, amazing talent, and a great player. She could possibly come back for a COVID year. And for me, I just I for for co for women's college basketball, I actually hope it happens. Sorry about that. I'm getting sleepy on you. <laughs> oh, that's all right. I actually yeah. hope it happens. So I just wanted to put that out there. And I already mentioned how many people watched the game last night. I was gonna I was gonna bring that up. But before we go tonight, um, I did post our CBS Bracket Challenge updates today on on uh, Twitter and on Facebook. So I'm nowhere near. I'm nowhere near the top line. So I'm not either. I was at the bottom. I have climbed my way back up to about the middle, somewhere like 22 or 24 or something. Uh, but I was at the bottom when this thing the first day or two. Um, but in the in the women's bracket. I'm sitting third, and if Iowa can win this thing and South Carolina don't, I got a chance to win it on the women's side. Um, but we'll see what happens. If South Carolina wins, I, I, I will finish second or third probably, um, maybe fourth. Um, none, of my final four, none of my final four made it except Purdue and UConn. On the men's? Yeah, I had Houston and – uh, North Carolina. Yeah, that's, that's all I got. I got Purdue and in, in, uh, UConn. That's what I got on the men's yeah. side. Oh, I got him. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> that was and, a fun. Show. That was a fun show tonight, by the way. Yeah. yeah. So, um, Jason Poole is leading the men's. Not sure who they are. And, and Lauren Hayes and Josh Hart. Good grief. I can't even think of his last name. And Josh Hart. He's well, going to you. Brain, he's gonna brain, you. Yeah, my brain stopped for a second. I'm sorry, Josh. And Josh Hart are tied, actually, for first place atop the women's bracket. The winners, guys, will get 20% off home field apparel. I have a little code for you to scan, and you can get 20% off at home field apparel. So that's even better than using our code. Uh, which is 15%. So uh, you get a little bit extra bonus here and get 20% off. Now, John, I wanted to bring this up. I may need to do our show um, on Thursday this week and do our game day show on Thursday. I might be working Friday night. I've got to find out for sure tomorrow. Um, okay. But our next show, um, 
because Friday night actually starts the girls games anyway. So mm -hmm. I really would like to do it Thursday. Yeah, we can do it Thursday. Because we will talk about the final four games um, on each side. So we got four games to talk about men's and women's, and we're going to break them down um, probably a little bit more than we normally do and talk about each team and talk about the matchups and, and, yeah. Because um, we're at the we're at the final four here, March Madness. So it's about, it's, it's about done. We we move yeah. into base. We move, we're moving into baseball season. Yeah. So we will. We spring will. Spring football. We'll, spring football is coming. Well, I've got it. Mm -hmm. So after this weekend, or after Monday night, actually, uh, with the championship game here uh, this weekend in the final four, not too long from now, I do have a special guest. We're going to have a NFL. Um, mock draft show again, our second one of the year. This is going to be about four or five days before the the actual draft. I'm guessing, I'm guessing this one's on Sunday, isn't it? It is. This one's yeah. on Sunday. It's April the 21st is when it is, so we are going to have that. Um, I was going to say before we log off tonight, um, all my prayers are with everybody in Kentucky tonight. With the tornadoes, there's been a lot of um, damage being reported different places. Now in my in my neck of the woods, we really didn't have a lot. We had a lot of wind, but um, it's supposed to be really bad um, the rest of the night, and well, more towards up north than it is here as of now. But um, prayers for them. Um, hopefully, they can recover and they can get things situated with their insurance company, and hopefully, things will work out. And then we go from tornadoes to thirty degree weather on Thursday. What about it, Brad? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So after this, there's a chance it, here where I am, and for you, it's probably even more, but here where I am, there's a chance of snow flurries. Like <laughs> I mean, so, what's going on here? Like, what? I was like, I thought we were done with that. Yeah, well, it's Kentucky, buddy. What do you expect? <laughs> I thought we were done with that, man. I mean, come on. Kentucky weather. Kentucky weather, man. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to wrap this up. Again, yeah. I want to give a huge shout-out to the University of Kentucky. I want to give yes, a huge shout-out to the University of Kentucky women's basketball team. Emma I want King. to give a shout-out to um, Cammie Moore and to Emma King for being on our show as our guest she's tonight. A, she was, she, she's a special, talented gal with, with a lot to look forward to in her career. Yeah, absolutely, and we loved having her on I loved watching her play over the last five years. I was watching Emma. I didn't get to say it tonight when you were on, but I was watching that in 2022 when you guys beat South Carolina. So if you watch this whole show, you do know I was watching that shot. I seen y'all jump for joy. I seen Emma. I seen you jump into the arms and all of that. I seen all of it and I loved it. And um, you know, so I've been watching your career for quite some time and I appreciate you being on the show with us. It was great to have you on. I wish you nothing but the best and success yeah. in life, marriage, kids, family, everything that happens to you. Right. You, have, you have your whole life to look forward to. So yeah. I appreciate it, everybody. We will see you on Thursday. Clyde, I appreciate it. Thank you. And we will see you on Thursday night for our game day pickums final four edition, guys. Final four over. weekend coming up, March Madness. Right over. See. You. All right, man. Y'all have a good night.